Karl Marx is a philosopher and theorist who has had a massive influence on the political ideology of many nations even today. His critique of capitalism helped to shape the social thinking of the European nations, finally paving the way for the welfare state and increased government intervention in economic affairs. However, as Richard Ebeling notes in his article, Karl Marx was a pretty bad person. When Karl Marx died in 1883, there were hardly a dozen mourners at the cemetery, including his family members. In fact, the great 20th century philosopher Karl Popper, one of Marx's strongest critics, called him a false prophet, especially because most of the countries that embraced capitalism in the 20th century went on to become democratic, open and prosperous societies. Karl Marx did not work consistently in his lifetime. He worked as a reporter or an editor for several newspapers and journals, but most of them folded up due to lack of funds or inadequate circulation. Karl's political ideology was censored by many governments, forcing him to shift his base and travel to various countries. Finally, he settled in London and wrote Das Kapital there. In his personal life, Karl Marx was known to have committed adultery many times and even had an illegitimate son named Freddy. This boy Freddy was born as an illegitimate child to Helen, who was the maid of Karl Marx. Characteristic of Marx, he refused to own the responsibility of the son. He already had seven children from his legitimate marriage. Scared that he will be discovered as the father of Freddy, Karl Marx wouldn't allow the little boy to come freely to the house and meet his mother. When occasionally the boy would visit his mother, he was made to enter from the kitchen door, meet his mother and leave quietly. In spite of this, Karl Marx was very scared that someone would discover that he was the father. So he convinced his friend Frederick Angels to claim parentage of the child and save him from any kind of social embarrassment. Paul Johnson, in his book Intellectuals, published in 1988, wrote, I quote, In all his researches into the iniquities of British capitalism, he came across many instances of low-paid workers, but he never succeeded in unearthing one who was paid literally no wages at all. Yet, such a worker did exist in his own household. This was Helen DeMuth, the lifelong family maid. She got her keep, but was paid nothing. She was a ferociously hard worker, not only cleaning and scrubbing, but managing the family budget. Marx never paid her a penny. Unquote. Karl Marx was crude, authoritarian, very often described as a hypocrite, and pretty impolite to people he wasn't fond of. Ferdinand Lazale, the leading German socialist, was once described by Marx in a letter to Frederick Engels in the following manner. I quote, The Jewish nigger Lazale fortunately departs at the end of this week. It is now absolutely clear to me that, as both the shape of his head and his hair texture shows, he descends from the Negroes who joined Moses' flight from Egypt. Now this combination of Germanness and Jewishness with a primarily Negro substance creates a strange product. The pushiness of the fellow is also nigger-like." Karl Marx is also described as a plagiarist. In the decade from 1852 to 1862, he was employed by the New York Daily Tribune as a correspondent. He had to write two articles every week 
for which he was paid quite well. But Marx was mostly occupied in participating in political intrigues or in writing his book Das Kapital. Almost one third of his articles were written by Frederick Engels, but Marx had no qualms in attaching his name to them. Karl Marx wasn't a man of tidy habits or lifestyle at all. Bathing, grooming himself, using clean linen or clothes, keeping himself presentable at all times wasn't in his books. His room smelled of tobacco strongly and there was dirtiness found everywhere. Chairs, tables and bookshelves would be in broken condition, hardly ever dusted and the room itself wouldn't be swept or broomed for days. Marx had a chaotic work style as well. He would laze around for weeks and then work feverishly day and night. He would stay up the entire night and then fully clothed sleep on the sofa throughout the day. Marxism caused a huge ideological impact on every aspect of the 20th century world. However, the man himself had a flip side as well.